We are previewing week 14 in college football here at SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshek. We're talking right now with returning guest Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com, who's a new guest this year and has been giving us a lot of great picks and advice and analysis over the past few weeks. Joe, thanks for being back with us. I'm glad that you're having me back. Fantastic sight, and I'm enjoying every session that we've done. Yeah, great, great freaking pick on, uh, on Florida last week. That line was way off, plus eight. Yeah, the, you know, when you have an SEC team as a big underdog against Florida State, I was a little bit worried because Driscoll is a heck of an athlete, and it was clear that he was not 100%, and Florida State did wind up taking the lead, and I got a little nervous, but Florida pulled it out, the better team uh, from the best conference in the country, whenever in doubt, when you see an SEC team, one of the SEC elite teams, as a big underdog, tough not to pounce on that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't take that line because I thought it was so big. There was something I wasn't seeing, so it made me nervous. And then the, we also did the Oregon-Oregon State game. And, you know, all the Sharps liked Oregon State uh, in the beginning of the week, in the middle of the week. Then at the end of the week, the line jumped up. And then, of course, Oregon got the cover. So what, what happened there? What happened? I know. Oregon State could not hold on to the ball. In the third quarter, they had about a four- or five-minute stretch where they could do nothing right whatsoever. Credit to Oregon. They didn't have that big letdown that we expected, you know, losing any hopes at winning the national championship, uh, playing in a big game. That's one of our better angles, like we say, when a team hits the road after a tough loss in particular, when they're eliminated from the national championship race. That's an angle I will still bet most likely for years to come because it's worked in the past, but not even the best angles are going to hit 100%. It's usually about an upper 50 to lower 60% play, but that was clearly the 40%. Right, right. All right, well, it was a great analysis. And again, one of the great, one of the big reasons to watch all these videos that we do is not just for the actual picks on the games we talk about, but because the, the analysis that, that a lot of the uh, handicappers give is good for, like, you know, your general handicapping knowledge, your store of knowledge in your mind. And that's, that's a great one. Thanks so much for that, Joe Duffy. And this week, you've picked another huge, maybe the, the hugest game, the hugest game of the year, the SEC <laughs> Championship game, Alabama at Georgia. It's, it is going to be played in the Georgia Dome. Georgia's a seven-point underdog. You know, this one, I'm looking at this game, trying to handicap the biggest game of the year. I don't know, Texas A&M beat Alabama. LSU came within four points. Everyone else Alabama played was kind of a significant notch below. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe it's going to be a close game, and Georgia is getting way too many points with seven. Is that how you see it? Yes, exactly. Okay. It's obviously not a total neutral game. It's not a home game for the University of Georgia. They travel about 60 miles where Alabama, they'll certainly send a large contingent. They're going to be traveling about 150 miles. But the key here is way in the offseason, not the preseason, I'm talking the offseason, like during the summer, I had Georgia as my dark horse candidate for the national championship. Mm. And one of the reasons was because of their one-two punch at running back. I love teams that can keep the ball off the field. The difference is one of those players was Isaiah Crowell, who was a projected stud, a guy who had gotten himself into a share of troubles and finally was kicked off of the team. And then I'll be the first to admit, I kind of scratched out, said, no, George is no longer my dark horse candidate. But then out of nowhere, a freshman Todd Gurley has done every bit as well as uh, Crowell could. And, they, you know, they call it down here, Gershel with uh, Marshall and Gurley, they have a fantastic one-two punch at running back, which keeps their defense off of the field. But everyone talks about what a great coach Nick Saban is, and he is a tremendous coach. But the number one reason that Saban has been successful is because he's a fantastic recruiter. Alabama always has the more talented team. This is a rare case where George is very competitive talent-wise. When it comes to four- and five-star blue chippers, they're competitive. Uh, when it comes to guys projected the NFL draft this year, I think Alabama is like 15 that are projected to go. Uh, Georgia has 14. In fact, on defense, they have three guys that could be among the top 15 picks. Uh, the, uh, Georgia, that is. So mm -hmm. Georgia is very competitive on both sides of the ball. They're also balanced. Andy, or Aaron Murray, I always want to call him Andy Murray, is a uh, heck of a quarterback. He's going to be playing in the NFL someday. What is also quite interesting for guys who like to bet the uh, quarter lines and totals, Georgia's a very balanced offense. And I saw an interesting study on ESPN Insider where they were saying the last three games that Alabama's lost, and you have to go back all the way to the Cam Newton era uh, when they've had three losses. But he said all three teams have beat them, and then Alabama's close games are usually against up-tempo offenses. Georgia has the ability to go up-tempo. So if Alabama can stop the run early, I look for Georgia to speed it up and – 
if you know George is off of a unsuccessful quarter offensively, might be something to look at betting the next quarter over because they do have that ability to make those adjustments. But all in all, these two teams are pretty evenly matched. Even the Massey ratings, which I think is probably the best site out there as far as measuring strength of schedule, modest advantage for Alabama. So small advantage to Alabama in talent. The uh, strength of schedule, small advantage, but they're laying a lot of points in what isn't a home game for Georgia, but it's certainly not a neutral game. Slight advantage as far as the site is concerned for University of Georgia. One of those games where I think Alabama will go to the national championship game, but they're not going to cover. All right, you make a very compelling argument, Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Why then do you think that the line is, uh, is seven then, if that's significantly higher than, than the power ratings that you've seen? Well, there's no question about it. It's perception. No team has been more successful over the last several years than Alabama. You're, if you want to bet on Alabama, you're going to be laying a big price. Uh, you're never going to get a good deal on Alabama. They've been the more successful team over the last several years. Georgia, though, remember, they do have the experience of playing in the SEC championship game last year. Now, they, things didn't turn out very well, but they've got most of their players back. And also keep in mind that Alabama... From their successful teams of the previous two years, and they've certainly been enormously successful this year as well, but they're minus about two-thirds of their starters on defense. But it can be answered in one word, perception. There's, mm -hmm. You're always going to have to pay a premium when you're betting on Alabama. All right. I guess, that, I guess that's pretty much all there is to say. Georgia plus seven makes some sense to me. Thanks so much, Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Thank you, Peter.